continuing with Genesis, we are in chapter 11. All men speak the same language. They build Tower of Babel. The Lord confounds their language and scatters them over all the earth. The generations of Shem include Abram, whose wife was Sarai. Abram leaves Ur and settles Haran. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them throughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. What is also translated as uh, bitumen. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down. And there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. So the term Babel is derived from the Hebrew uh, Balal, meaning to confound, to mix or confound. Now, a couple of things here I want to just talk about briefly. This event is where, of course, before this, the, uh, as I said, everybody spoke one language. This would have been the, the, what we call the Adamic tongue, the language of Adam. Now God changes everything up. He mixes it all up. And, and shortly we will start reading a little bit in the book of Ether, which will deal a little bit more about the uh, Tower of Babel. And we will learn that some people did not lose the original language. But this is just from uh, apocryphal sources, but I do think it is probably true for the most part, is that when God confounded the languages, that is also when he divided the land. That was all one event. God came down and he broke the continents up, he destroyed the tower, and he confounded the languages all at once. And if we look at the timeline of ages, which we will be reading of in just a moment, we can see that the days of Peleg line up perfectly with what would be the Tower of Babel, approximately. Now this also means that Abraham was alive at the time of the Tower of Babel. He would have been 20, 30, something like that. I I think I've read in the book of Jasher, which is an apocryphal work, so don't quote me on this. Well, you can quote me, but don't take it as doctrine necessarily. That he was about 50 years old at the time of the Tower of Babel. So we can see how these things overlap. See, the scriptures almost always are written in episodes. But if we look at the timeline, if we actually study how things played out, just like with when we look at the ages of the ancient patriarchs, we know that Adam was the only one that had died before the city of Enoch was translated, and that Noah was born only a couple of years after. When we look at the timeline, we see these things. We see that Abraham probably lived at the time of the Tower of Babel. We see uh, Noah was still alive. Shem was still alive. Eber was alive. Peleg was probably alive. And actually, according to the book of Jasher, I believe that this event happened right at the end of the life of Peleg. So we, we see how things overlap, that these guys actually knew each other. These events were happening. Also, another little note, it says this is the, in the plain of Shinar, a city called Babel. Well, that was the city of Nimrod. He was the king of Babel. He had a few other cities that served him, but he was the king of Babel in the land of Shinar. So he was the king that was leading the building of the Tower of Babel. 
again, we see these overlappings in the story, and when we look at the timeline, I think looking at the timeline is actually very important. We understand the scriptures more, we understand the history, and we understand how everything relates to each other when we pay attention to the timeline. But let us continue now. These are the generations of Shem. Okay, so we're now again changing perspectives. This is probably written by Shem. Possibly by Eber, though. You never know. Shem was 100 years old and begat Arphaxad two years after the flood. And Shem lived after he begat Arphaxad 500 years and begat sons and daughters. And Arphaxad lived five and thirty years and begat Salah. And Arphaxad lived after he begat Salah 403 years and begat sons and daughters. Let me step back in the air. So, okay. It says Shem was 100 years and begat Arphaxad two years after the flood. Okay. Shem lived after he begat Arphaxad 500 years and begat sons. No, I mean, Shem lived 600 years. However, I do want to back up for a minute because in the book of Moses, if you'll remember, we are told that Shem was actually born 110 years before the flood, or 108 years, I think. It was right here. Moses chapter 7, was it? End of Moses chapter 7. Oh no, chapter 8, verse 12. So Noah was 450 when he begat Japheth, 400. Uh, 42 years afterwards, he begat Shem. And when he was 500 years, he begat Ham, which means Shem was 108 years old when the flood came, which means that he was actually. 110 years old when our Faxa was born, not 100. I mean, he, um, he was 108 years old when our Faxa was born. Right? Oh, yeah, sorry. He was 110 years old when our Faxa was born. I got my math wrong there. So he lived to be 610, if we correct the record using the Book of Moses. Our Faxa lived five and 30 years, and then begat Salah, and then lived 403 years. So he lived 438 years. You'll note, before the flood, they were living over 900. Even Noah, after the flood, he still lived 950 years. Shem is 600, but Arphaxad is only 438. Solon lived 30 years and begat Eber. And Solon lived after he begat Eber 403 years and begat sons and daughters. That's 433 years. And Eber lived 4 and 30 years and begat Peleg. And Eber lived after he begat Peleg 430 years and begat sons and daughters. So he lived 468 years. And Peleg lived 30 years and begat Reu. And Peleg lived after he begat Reu 209 years and begat sons and daughters. So he lived only a little over 200. And Reu lived two, two and 30 years and begat Sarag. And Reu lived after he begat Sarek 270 years and begat sons and daughters, again, just over 200 years. And Sarek lived 30 years and begat Nahor. And Sarek lived after he begat Nahor 200 years and begat sons and daughters. Notice the pattern. And Nahor lived 9 and 20 years and begat Terah. And Nahor lived after he begat Terah 119 years and begat sons and daughters. And Terah lived 70 years and begat Ab Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran begat Lot. And Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his nativity in Ur of the Chaldees. And Abram and Nahor took them wives. And the name of Abram's wife was Sarai. And the name of Nahor's wife, Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Iscah. But Sarah was, Sarai was, born, was barren. She had no child. And Terah took Abram his son, and Lot the son of Haran his son's son, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife. And they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Terah were two hundred and five years, and Terah died in Haran. So notice everybody's living less time. 
Before the flood, it was generally over 900 years. After the flood, for the first four generations, they're still living about 450 on average. Shem lived a little over 600. Our Faxed, Saul, and Eber all live just over four, uh, around 450. But then Peleg comes, and it drops to 250, 250 or 230, around there, until you get down to Nahor, uh, to Tera. He lived just over 200 years. His father, Tera, lived under 200 years. After this point, nobody lives over 200 years. Now, this pattern is not explained in the Bible. And there's the speculation that, you know, after the flood, maybe, you know, the firmament was taken out, so we had rain. Now we got more radiation coming from the sun. People are just aging faster. And that is probably partly true, which is why we have an immediate drop after the flood. Shem's only 600, only 600 years, 450 for those born after the flood. The ones born before the Shem, he was born before the flood, so he still has the uh, pre-flood genetics, you might say. But why is it suddenly dropped below 200 at the days of Peleg? Why do we get this second cutoff? And this we go back to the apocryphal work of the book of Jasher, which states, and I found this very interesting, you know, in, in Genesis, you remember it says, the name of the one was Peleg, for in his days was the earth divided. But then it says in the book of Jasher, it has that same quote, but it says in the book of Jasher, and his brother's name was Joktan, for in his days was the life of man reduced, or the life of man shortened. So God, when God uh, confounded the languages and divided the continents, he also shortened the lifespan of man. Now again, this is apocryphal source. Don't take it as... Uh, gospel doctrine, but I think it's probably true. I think it, it fits with what the Bible says. One last note before I end this. I mentioned Eber, and you will note if you line up the timeline, the reason that Eber is the next great patriarch is because he is the first one that outlives Shem. Our Faxid and Sala both died before Shem did. Eber is the first one to outlive Shem. So when Shem died, Eber became the patriarch. Our Faxon and Sala were still patriarchs. They still had the patriarchal authority. But because Shem was still alive, he was the senior patriarch. But when Shem died, Eber became the next senior patriarch. You will also note, looking at the timeline, which if you pay careful attention... Noah was alive when Abraham was born. Shem was alive when Isaac was born. Shem was alive to see Sarah die. Eber was still alive when Jacob and his sons went into Egypt. They were not, Abraham was not the only faithful person on the earth. According, again, going back to the book of Jasher, according to that, Abraham was actually taught by Noah. He went to school in Noah's house. He was taught by Noah. He was taught by Shem. Isaac was taught by Shem and Eber. Jacob was taught by Shem and Eber. So I find that interesting. You got These people were contemporary to each other.